Hello, hello. We're going to do some fun stuff today, folks. How you doing? Jonathan Munsell, the founder and creator of Success Systems. Um, we have uh, we have business success systems, restaurant success system, detailer insider secrets, franchise success systems, and I personally own a whole bunch of companies, uh, including uh, an international franchise called Pronto Wash. And today I'm going to go through and help everyone get ahead of their marketing. I think it's a critical uh, piece of, of what folks need to be doing. You got to get ahead of your marketing and stay ahead of it. So when I, so I'm going to, here we go. We'll share the screen here. Hopefully everybody can see that. So today we're going to be talking about September 2022 marketing and you know, we're in July, right? Most people don't get that far ahead of their marketing. Um, most people are uh, still thinking about the opportunity they missed on the 4th of July. So for us, it's, you know, we're always three months ahead of our marketing. And part of that is really around how, how we are doing, like, um, as far as all the things we do to set up our promotions and get print material and get all the copy, all of those things, um, take a little bit of time. So you got to get ahead of it. If you want to do it well, you got to like get ahead. So I always like to, to go three months ahead. And as I do this today, I like to go back and kind of give everybody a little bit of an update from the month we're in, the month we're going into. So um, I like to go back a little bit and look at where we are and kind of what some of the promotions are. So I go back and you can look at July, right? So in July, you know, we have a whole big calendar of events, lots and lots of stuff that you can jump into. The cool thing about how we constructed the, the marketing planner is it's got like every single possible event going on anywhere, anytime, and we constantly are updating this. So my team spends a tremendous amount of work making sure that we have kind of all the resources for you guys so you don't have to do all the work. You can kind of jump into the marketing planner and you can, you know, pick the things that you want. And the way that I do it is I end up going and I use this big grid here and we'll actually use this to map out everything. So if you look, it's got what text, what posts, you know, Twitter, we got Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, every little thing you can possibly email blast, but you can actually go and if you have the, the planner, you can click right in this and put your messages, right? You can go like, you know, put that stuff right in there and, and now you have it. And the beauty is, is if you do it, you do it, you know, over time each month, you end up having this kind of repository of just great stuff. So, you know, we have a whole, you know, we listed out many different ways. So you can look at it, you know, monthly observances, weekly, daily. And, you know, I like this page, one of my favorites, you know, very graphically appealing. But, you know, obviously, you know, in July, we, we had the 4th of July. So that was a good one to jump into. But there's other ones that are still coming up. And there's some, some cool things that happen, you know, you use Shark Awareness Day, right? You no, know, it's gonna be Shark Week. Uh, coming up but we always have food stuff we have stuff that you can jump into in you know any business so you know i own a detailing company right car washing detailing well you know there's everything in here you can adapt to your business so it doesn't matter what business you're in you own a restaurant no problem you can adapt these concepts to it and you'll always be able to to pull something, you just got to think through it a little bit and be creative. Um, and we're in that time of year that I'm always thinking about, you know, what's the big promotion I'm going to do for the summer? Because the summer doesn't have like the holidays, like, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and all, you know, then September, which we're going to talk about, you're getting into like back to school. So I like to make my own sizzling summer sweepstakes. And I've been doing it for years I've been doing it when I owned restaurants, I've done it. We do it you know, with all the companies that I have now. And it's really, it just creates this amazing amount of content and things for you to talk about. So, you know, July is the time we start to kick that off. August is is really the big month for it. Um, so, you know, you'll see that coming from us, but, you know, you have all these tools, you have samples of things you can do. 
you have the monthly planner where you can actually write it all out. You know, there's the general stuff that everybody should be doing anyway. Um, and then there's even some advanced stuff and it talks about, you know, just reaching out to people that are already your, your guests, your clients, your customers. Um, and it also talks about, you know, when are you going to have your marketing meeting? We always have two. We have one in the beginning of the month where we kind of take this call. And when we're planning it, we talk about this and what we're thinking about, what we want to do. And then we finalize all that on the third week of the month. So we always do the first week and then the third week. And then by then, once it's finalized, then we have time to get everything into production. So I, I suggest that format. It keeps everybody kind of in check and moving along. But July's got a lot of cool stuff. And if you're on the call for August, August also has, you know, like I said, we create stuff in August. It's my birthday month. So it's super easy to be able to, to throw a birthday party, right? When's your birthday? <laughs> you should be doing something celebrated in your business, right? It's like, you know, it's my birthday, but you get all the presents is kind of the, the angle that we take with that. But again, you know, you have the promotional planner where you can map everything out. Um, you have the daily, weekly, monthly observances, and you know you got some good promotions that you can jump in and kind of S and D from what we're doing, um, and you can utilize them all over. And then you'll see there's like other things. So you know, be sure to scroll down on the pages and see what things are. Um, you know, in August we're starting to look at our next month's menu. We're starting to think about people going back to school. You know, when I was a kid, we went back to school after Labor Day. Um, nowadays, my kids, you know, we're in school year round. So it's, but, you know, we start thinking about that. We'll do a, a, a drive for people to donate supplies. If I have a brick and mortar, I'm doing things like that all the time. You know, I'm doing fundraisers. I'm doing things where people can, you know, bring in, you know, canned goods and, you know, get money off their bill type of thing. Anything you can do to, to help the community, right? I, I believe passionately in that, but help the community help others, right? Your customers, your clients. Um, and then obviously all that works to better your business. At the end of the day, you know, you're going to, you're going to be the one that benefits. So all of those things, when you add them all up and you do them effectively, then you end up with this, you know, kind of eureka moment where your business is doing really well and it's moving forward. So let's jump into kind of the deeper details. And I want to go through page by page for uh, September and kind of just tell you what I see things that I gravitate towards. And, you know, if you guys are live and you want to chat, there's, uh, we're live on Facebook, but we also have the Zoom call. So if you're on either one of the platforms and you have questions, just pop them in there and I'll make sure before I'm done, I go back and, and get with my folks who are kind of monitoring the chats and different things. And we'll make sure that you guys get answers or if you have something that you want to contribute. I do like when this call is uh, more interactive. Okay, so uh, here's the copyright page. Don't steal my shit, basically. Um, so let's talk about the month, okay? So first off, you know, I'm a, I'm a really big proponent of big, strong headlines, um, giving people reasons to buy from you. And it actually is an easy way to build a campaign that is kind of like a drip or nurture campaign. And, and we all often times use it in the context of did you know right you you know all this great stuff about your business you've been doing the business for a long time but they don't know right things that you've done that you've already forgotten about they may not know they may not know about the ingredients in your food they may know not know that you know it's farm raised all these different things that you just take for granted you know if you have a detailing business like me you know do they know like that all of the products that we have are you know, environmentally friendly, biodegradable. You know, we assume they do, but do they really? Do they understand how it all works? So we constantly are taking information that's pretty common to us and we'll do it. And literally just, if you want to build a great nurture campaign, if you don't have one, right? Communicating on a regular basis with especially new customers, but your existing customers is really, really important. So there's only three ways to increase sales. You get new customers, you get your new customers to come or transact more often, and then you get your existing customers to spend more, right? So you got to like get the check average and the, and the buy up, but two thirds of that equation are happening from people that you're already doing business with. 
but usually most people are really into, oh, I want new customers. And we are similar in that. We always want new customers because we know when we get a customer, they're going to be a customer for life. I look at the lifetime value of that and, and what does that mean to get a new customer? I, I like it for that reason. But the reality is that you know we, we want to keep that person. We want them to be a customer for life. And all I, if I can keep adding to that, I stay in communication with them. And at the end of the day, you got to automate this stuff. You can't be sitting there every day going and sending out, you know, the emails. You build them, you build them so they're really good and strong. You can lay them out. We use different tools to map out, you know, the workflows. Um, you know, it built into the system that the uh, success system hub, we have workflows. You can visually see what that kind of looks like. So you're not just, you know, you know, you forget things, right? You don't have all the steps. And if they do this, then they go here. And if they do this, they go here. And if they go here, they go here. If they click, they go, you know, we do all that stuff, but we build it really well on the front end. And we make tweaks over time, right? We, we believe in constantly improving. You get data, right? You know, hey, people aren't getting to this point. Well, like, let's do something to get them to that point. So those are things that everybody needs to be looking at in their businesses. How do we keep making it better? And then you need the data. If you don't have the data to, to compare to, then you know you're it's like driving a car without having a you know your dashboard in your console so make sure you have those things but give people really good reasons to buy from you you know let them know if you're the best the biggest the most badass at whatever it is you do don't be afraid to put that out there and i also am really big about you know putting a guarantee right if you're not happy you're not going to pay for it and people get weird about that but the reality is, is that very, very few people have ever taken me up on it. And my guarantee isn't like, you know, oh, if you don't like it, it's free. Like in the sense of, you know, a service, it's, you know, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you're happy with it. And, you know, by the, by the time you use that in the front end of your marketing, it never can bite you enough in the back end. But people will not do it for that reason. Okay, so let's talk here. The um, Is your sign getting the job done? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, I have signs all around me. The, uh, it's a huge topic for me is the effectiveness of signs and what's on them. Um, you deal with the, the typical graphics person and they want to put your logo big and, and you know, front and center. And uh, if you look at any of my marketing, my, my logo and contact information is really the smallest and you know, in the bottom corner because it's really about getting the message to them so they consume the message. And then if we can do that, then they'll get to the place. And, you know, you always have to have a call to action, ideally an expiration if it's, you know, a promotion. But you got to have compelling copy, big, bold headline, and signs are no different. And you got to remember, you can't put everything on a sign. A sign is visible one inch per 10 feet. Okay, so if I have one inch, somebody can see it 10 feet away. Two inches, 20 feet. Three inches, 30 feet. Right? So it's like when you think about the size of that and the distance, Right. If I have a, something out on the street, you know, those letters need to be big. I want people to see it from far away. Well, once you, you know, look at a billboard, billboards don't say a lot. They don't have a bunch of little tiny text on it. And your signs shouldn't be that way either. Your signs should be directing them. And, and a great thing to do is give them ways to get more information quickly and easily. Right. We have a thing, text book to this phone number. Like, okay, I, anybody can type book, B-O-O-K. So, you know, that's, that's, something you can do to leverage your sign, but really make sure that your sign is always of high quality. The worst is seeing signs, lights out, things like that. Like, oh, it drives me batty. I drive around town and I'm just like, oh, how do these people survive? So just make sure that you have a really effective sign. Uh, recommended read. I don't know if you guys have ever checked out this book, but Positively Outrageous Service. Um, it, it, as I was preparing for this call, um, I it reminded me of a great, uh, system that we have built internally in our company. And I can show you guys that if I still have it up. Um, yeah, so, you know, we have a concept inside of every company that I've ever had, which is called Totally Outrageous Service, T-O-S. And, you know, this is like one of, the, this is a tool we use in business to help communicate it very easily and effectively to our staff. There's like a whole big document, but if you look, this is like the short version. Um, there's a whole document that explains these things in detail, but it's nice if you can provide, if you're really trying to get something done and you have an initiative in your business, if, if you can break it down to an index card, a cheat sheet, things like that, that helps your folks and then focus on it. If it's important to you, then like have everybody pull it out. Let's read it. 
you know, let's read it again. Let's read it every damn day until they just absolutely are nailing it. And that's how you effectively get systems into place. You have to be that, that way. You have to overmanage them. But, you know, we think about it all the time. It's about, you know, greeting the guests with a smile, um, you know, facing them at all times, right? You turn your back to somebody when you're dealing with them, you know, suggestive upselling. We do that in every business, right? And you're perceived as an expert when you're upselling folks. Like, don't look at it as, oh, I'm selling them. No, you want to make sure that they know all the options available to them and that you get them into the one that's right for them. And that's what, it, you know, people don't like the selling, you know, well, guess what? You know, it's a business and businesses make money and you make money by selling things. And the better you can do it, right? You can upsell, you're going to increase your check average. It's one of the three ways to increase your business. So anyway, I wanted to share a little bit of that. It made me think about it as I was prepping today. Um, okay, so we got the big old calendar of events. And th this is good. It's almost like uh, there's too much these days. Um, you know, I like this one. Like, like I've said before, I use this one and, and actually will document right into the boxes what we got going on. And then our folks can have it. Obviously, it's a kind of a big view here. Let me get back out of it for some folks. So you can kind of see what it looks like. I mean, look at this thing. But really cool. And then you could literally just like, you can scroll across all the, but you can see all the different days as you scroll across. Okay. Pretty wild, right? But it's got your whole month there and, you, and literally, we give this to you so you use it. We want you to actually go and write in it. Um, so let's jump over here. This is kind of the way that I go through it because I kind of want to pick out things that are that jump out to me. So here, let's go back up a little bit bigger view. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a cancer survivor. I would immediately gravitate towards that. You know, I, I would even go as so far as to, you know, I would just, I print it out. Actually, I, I have copies of this printed out and I'll just go through it, circle, 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 circle. And then when I meet with my folks, we'll throw it out there, we'll spitball. And, you know, we don't do the same thing over and over. We like to actually, you know, if we've done something in the past, we might switch it up in a different month. But as I just run through here, you know, dog ownership stuff. I mean, God, everybody and their pets, everybody loves a dog. So good thing to, to mention there, um, lots of food stuff. So you're going to see, you know, it's all American breakfast month. Like I said, I'm a big cancer person. We'll definitely be doing something around that. All right, college, right? It's like, you know, by this time in September, people are back in school, back in college. So good stuff to jump in. Eat chicken month. Come on, if you have a restaurant, how are you not going to do eat chicken month? One of your, especially now, it's one of your best costing items in, in the protein category. Um, you know, again, for us, when it, it comes to coaching you guys in business, right, you know, we'll, we'll spend some time this in September talking about strategic thinking. It's a great time of year to get your head out of your ass and finish up the year really strong. So we'll be talking to you guys about that. Yeah, leukemia, lymphoma, um, another good one there, all kinds of food stuff, cheese, chicken, uh, Pet Memorial Month, you can talk about dead pets. Yeah. I'm just looking here, what would I jump on? And again, you don't wanna have 900 monthly things. I'd pick one, maybe two. We'll definitely do cancer awareness and we'll probably do for you guys strategic thinking. The, uh, but the weekly ones are good because you can have more of them. It gives you content for your own newsletters that you know, you're focusing on different things. And if you can really take the calendar and you look at it as, you know, you know, can I run some like week long things? Can I have something, you know, you get more, more juice from your squeeze, right? I can run a single day event and I can put a lot of effort into it. I can create sign and all, or I can do, like we said, a month long event, right? Cover the whole month. Or is it a week long event? You know, so now I'm getting, you know, seven days out of the efforts that I put in, but it's nice because if you understand how we handle events or single day week events, it's always we we set the date, we work up to it in our marketing, like it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's here. 
And then, you know, we focus on that for the day and we make posts and, you know, it's kind of like in the moment. And then after that, we'll take and we'll take customer feedback. We'll take pictures. If we had an enter to win, we'll use that. So then we'll drip out afterwards, kind of the follow up from it. And you package all that stuff up at the end of the month and you put it in your newsletter that goes out the following month. Hey, thank you guys for celebrating with us. And so all of this content and all the promotions kind of go and they stack on top of each other. If you've got a good calendar, that's great stuff to, to talk about. You, you should be communicating to your existing customers often, whether it's a, a digital newsletter, right? An e-blast, or if it's print. And I'm a big proponent. If you have face-to-face -face brick and mortar type of places where you can actually connect with your customers, I would take all of the stuff you're doing and I would package it into just a, you know, a super simple handout, something that you can leave behind with them. You can, you know, you can put it in every bag type of thing. If you have a, a restaurant, if you, you, you have a car wash detailing business, put it in the cup holder, but you'd be surprised. Those things, they, they have legs. So if you put it there and you get it there and you can do this very inexpensively, it's paper and ink. But if you can do that, then what happens is, you know, even if they're going to go throw it out, before they throw it out, they're going to look at it. And then they might look at the back. And if they really like it, they're going to like dive into it. So just remember that if you know, and this is something you can mail. If you don't have a brick and mortar and you have a good customer list, mail the thing to their houses. You know, nobody's doing that. Think about how many people are sending you a newsletter about all the cool stuff in their business and celebrating the customers and celebrating the employees and, you know, just making this energy around the business. Like, None unless you do business with me, but it's, it's amazing when you can do that. So the, uh, let's jump in. I want to look at, okay. So these are good. Like, again, I'm, I'm like a picture guy, right? The, uh, I don't know who Emma Nutt is, but she's got a day. Uh, you know, Hey, letter writing day. I mean, as odd as that seems, that might be something, you know, how about you send a, a, personal letter to your customers. Hey, just wanted to thank you. It's it's letter writing day and I was thinking of you. And just send them a little note. Could be a post-it note. It could be anything, right? Just like, hey, thinking of you type of thing. Um, VJ Day, Victory Over Japan. A little his history buffs there. Skyscraper Day, if you're in a city, around a city. The uh, Newspaper Carrier Day. Oh my God, I used to deliver newspapers when I was a kid. And that is such an interesting job uh be late for something day that's every day in my world uh international day of charity read a book day i mean another good one you got food stuff you know make sure you're jumping on the salami you're down in, in tampa miami you know you got iguana awareness day i was very aware when they were falling out of the trees when it got to freezing uh Physical therapy day. I mean, anybody in the healthcare industry, you know, that's something I would absolutely be jumping on. Uh, wonderful weirdos day. That's every day in my office. Uh, suicide prevention, huge topic. So it's something else that you all, you know, obviously we're talking about the calendar, but whenever you're marketing, you really want to look at what's going on. What, what's the going on in the world? What's in the news, right? I'm not a big proponent. I don't plug into the news all the time because most of it's bad and it's like, filtered so i i like to watch unfiltered international stuff but you know there's a lot of talk around that you know there's there's veterans kill themselves you know more often than they ever should um teens you know so that's a big topic that that really hits a lot of people and it's tough the uh, uh september 11th come on you gotta do something for that video games i'll be hanging with the kids yeah, how about, I mean, there's a great one for restaurant folks. You know, kids take over the kitchen day. How cool would it be to get some kids in your restaurant? You know, maybe you do it as a, you can't have a whole bunch of kids running around, but maybe you do it where they, the parents can write a letter why they think their kids should be, you know, win this special day and be able to come and cook at your restaurant. And then you draw that, right? You draw the winner and you got time, right? So you can like get this thing out in August. Parents can be involved. And then you draw the winner and then you make a whole, I mean, I'd make a TV show out of the thing is what I would do. I would make sure I got a, a good, good camera going that day. And I would be filming all kinds of cool stuff. That would be really fun promotional. Um, we got donuts. We got cheese toast day. Is that cheese toast? The, uh, looks like a grilled cheese sandwich. Guacamole, 
right? Anything related to kids, you got Play-Doh Day, Step Family Day, you know, obviously with the divorce rates as they are in the US, right? You got a lot of step families. Oof, Monte Cristo, one of my favorites. I'm actually starving, so that's not helping me at all. Uh, you know, ebook, right? We give out ebooks all the time. What a great day for us to do something and give away maybe a, a bulk of them. Talk like a pirate day, okay? I lived in Tybee Island, Georgia for, for an entire year consulting for a resort. And they have this huge pirate culture. And September 19th, Talk Like a Pirate Day was a blast. They have a parade. They go nuts down there. Um, Business Woman's Day. What a great one. Yeah, one, of the, one of the fundamental um, things that I do in business is, when, especially if I have a brick and mortar, especially if I have a restaurant, the... I always have a day for each different kind of like industry. So it, when I, in my Jumping Johnny's, I had the, uh, I had a day and it was, you know, it was first responders, right? EMS, fire, all those, right? They, they had a, a certain day that they could get a special discount. And I had something for, you know, doctors, lawyers, nurses, everybody had a day. The whole calendar was like full. And it's one of my favorite promotions because it always gave us something to talk about. And the crowd would change, you know, and, and ironically enough, you know, different days brought out different exciting people. And sometimes people came out to watch those people. So it's a great thing to do if you can have something literally for like every day, to, you know, to get people to become regulars at your business. They know every Tuesday is, is this day I'm going there, right? It's like the old blue plate special, right? Uh, open faced meatloaf on Wednesdays. Um, but got a lot of great stuff here. I appreciate the team. I think you guys, my team do a, did a beautiful job of pulling some stuff together for you guys and give you some visual representations. The uh, Good Neighbor Day, that's another good one. You know, why, why would not celebrate Good Neighbor Day with a refer a friend campaign? The uh, World Heart Day. Yeah, so lots of, I mean, got tons and tons and tons of stuff for you guys to jump into. And then the thing I... I historically have done, right? Here's some S&D promotions. These are things that I've done. These are like, right, taken from the pages of my own little personal newsletters. Um, you know, oh, another great one right here, scratch-offs. Scratch-offs are very inexpensive and you can actually have a like big prize and it it's actually insured. So, which is kind of crazy. So you can actually buy insurance and you buy it by the ticket. So if you're like, you know, okay, we're going to give out a thousand tickets. We want to have a hundred thousand dollar prize. You know, they know what the odds are. So you, you pay like a, a weird small amount of money to be able to offer a hundred thousand dollar prize, but it's insured that, that you don't even have to pay for it in the end. If it happens, you, you won't go out of pocket a hundred thousand bucks because the odds and, and everything there's companies that insure it. But scratch-offs are great. Um, I'm a big fan of that. I'm a big fan of, of making things into fun games for everybody. So here's some other ones that I've done over time. <laughs> so looking at September, back to school, Labor Day, Rosh Hashanah, Patriot Day, Grandparents Day, Citizenship Day, Talk Like a Pirate, first day of autumn, football season, right? Now, like another huge one, right? It's always the talk, you know, people in their, their fantasy football leagues, their draft picks, all those things. Um, always rolled out a new menu in my restaurants. And we always had an LTO, a limited time offering. And I learned over time to run those for about two months and you get the most kind of squeeze out of it and you can change those up. Um, but you'll see, you know, these are all literally taken from the pages of Jonathan Munsell's life, um, right? Oh yeah, September, right? If we did a summer, a sizzling summer sweepstakes, we're going to draw that either right at the end of, of the month or we're going to do it in September. So we're going to use that promotion for the summer and then we're going to finish it with a big event in September. Something for teachers, I think, is another great one. And another one, like I have a list of the top promotions I've ever done. Another great one that I've done was you actually can sell, actually you can use the school to sell your product and share some of the proceeds with them. It's a fundraising idea. So think about this. 
um, they go and they sell a booklet of coupons. I hate that word, but they sell a, you know, and in that booklet, it's, you know, so say it was for Jumpin' Johnny's, you know, it's got a free fry in there. It's got, you know, buy one, get one free. You know, the total value of everything in there is like a hundred bucks, right? Well, they go and they sell it for 10 bucks. And, you know, they just need to pay for the printing and whatever the cost is. Now, why would you do that? Like, so one, it's a fundraiser for them. Now you have an army of people out there promoting your business and you know, they buy them, right? They're not going to not buy them. Grandma's not going to not buy the fundraiser from the kid. But now what happens is your marketing is in everybody's hands and it's, you know, what are they going to do? Now they're coming to your business. So in the car wash business, I could, you know, you could, you could do different, you know, you can do a bunch of different, you know, and not necessarily discounts. It could even be where, you know, they get a frequency, they get a free rain check on a wash. They, you know, if they come in three times in the month, they're going to get a free trunk organizer. So the things you can do to like kind of really beef it up, not go out of pocket a lot, but the perceived value is there. So you end up having this, you know, really great promotion. It's, you know, you're supporting the local charities. The PTA is always looking for money. The, uh, and the first place they go is to the parents, uh, you know, my tax dollars at work, but I got to go pay for everything. The, uh, so anyway, so the good ones that you can do, remember that there's ways to take promotions and do some really cool stuff with them. Here's some of the details on some of the promotions that we've done for Sizzling Summer. Now we always have a, like a nice direct mail campaign. Like do not forget about mail guys. Like it is, it, nowadays I barely get stuff in the mail and you know, you want to cut through the clutter of marketing and the millions of marketing messages that people get, you know, then, you know, mail, put something in the mail, have it show up on their door. It's like, you know, put it in a cool packaging or envelope. So they open it and put something in it, lumpy mail, right? It's like, you know, everybody always wants to know what's in there. So like, but again, very inexpensive uh, direct mail campaign. And one of the best strategies is, and you don't even have to do it, you can do it to your existing customers, which is nice, right? You can send them out the newsletter and, you know, that's one thing I would definitely do. Another one would be to look at your customer base, look at where they live, like addresses wise, and send it to everyone else around them, not necessarily them. Right. If they're already coming to your business, then you know you're good because you should have a good system of keeping them. The but what about their neighbors, right? You know, we have a, a process that we do called three doors right, three doors left. So if we go into a service at a house when the technician's done, right? First, when he's doing a service, he's putting up signage like at the start, step one. Step two is, you know, he finishes it. Step three, when he's done, he goes three doors right and three doors left and says, oh, you know, we just did Mrs. Smith's, you know, service, you know, be sure to ask her about it. And, you know, and here's $10 off for you. So you can, you know, have the same service and keep up with the Joneses type of thing. Well, that's a great way to get more depth into somewhere where you might already be going. But think about it, you know, it's the old like birds flock together. If you know that a lot of your customers are coming from a certain neighborhood, well, you can assume that you're not getting all the ones that you think you should be. And you got to assume that there's more there to get. So don't be afraid to take all of this great stuff that you do and mail it, like ship it. And, you know, we, we have an old joke in the direct mail side of the business. You know, whenever we find a direct mail campaign that really works well, the, the saying around here is, buy more stamps. Okay. If you got a sales letter and it's performing and people are buying, well, one, if you, if you just mail it to these same people again, right? So you mailed out a hundred, 10 people bought. Well, those 10 people are now customers. Well, what about the other 90? Mail them again. Okay. And then you're going to get five more. Okay. Now you got 15 over here. Well, what about the other 85? Mail them again. And I'm telling you that that type of repetitiveness actually gets you really, really strong results. You don't even need to change the letter or whatever you're sending out very much. You know, maybe the last one is, you know, final notice. And maybe you go through and you circle the really important stuff, like literally by hand, like, you know, whoop, whoop. Um, a copy doodle, it used to be called. It's uh, you know, these online things that you can like put into your, so it looks like, you know, 
a coffee ring on a you know, like somebody put their coffee cup down on on the note that you're sending it just gives it more authenticity um, but those are all great things to do and and if you're doing good promotions you're planning out your months you're ahead of it you'll be able to capitalize on those things and as you're leading up to the month so you're thinking now about september you know you can like flush out the ideas that's the whole goal here is that you can like oh god i remember he said that oh you know i just saw that you're you go to the dollar store and you see a bunch of tchotchkes that relate to something that we're talking about right it's after the fourth of july but you know you got patriot day coming up in september maybe you should go buy those 50 percent off flags and plates and cups and star spangled everything and then just hold on to it because you know you got something coming up in the future so that those are things that like when you get this into your brain You'll, you'll get so much more out of your marketing by getting ahead of it and staying ahead of it. And that's the passion. And that's why I do this call for years and years and years. I've done this and it's because I know the value of it. And I know the value of you, know, you guys getting this and being able to go through it and apply it. It's really, really something I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to, as I Kind of wind this up. I'm going to look to uh, my team to see if there's anybody, any questions, comments, anything we got, anything we might have gotten on Facebook, um, any shout outs I need to do. Um, but here there's, you know, again, you know, we literally reduce it to writing, get it written down. And then we have, you know, the general planner. This is like, you know, I don't know why that says false, but it's not going to say it anymore. But, you know, these are like kind of, you know, if you have a new customer, are you sending them like a welcome and a thank you? Are you sending out everybody your newsletter? Do you have birthdays and are you doing a birthday program? It's one of the most effective things you can do. Well, if I'm sending out birthdays, six months after that, I should be sending out half birthdays. Okay, if I have a restaurant, I'm sending out birthday cards. Well, that's great. That got them in once, but I want to get them in more. So, you know, you got to have a loyalty program, a rewards program. Those things are critical. Well, think about this. A family of four, mommy, daddy, Billy, and Susie. Mom and dad and Billy and Susie all have birthdays, four birthdays. They all have half birthdays, four half birthdays. Mom and dad had a, have an anniversary and the entirety of the family has an anniversary of when they first did business with you. That's 10 mailable occurrences to a single family in a year. And it, it costs like, I don't know, 75 cents. So, you know, for $7.50, do you think it's worth communicating to your to your customer base and getting them to come back in? Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> so the math doesn't lie, guys. Um, so you know, originally we started out with birthdays, and then we said, oh, why don't we do a half birthday, half off an entree or something? Um, then you have the anniversaries, right? The uh, and you, you, anniversary one can just be a nice, fun thing to do if you know their anniversary, right? If you're in the wedding industry. You, you know the, their anniversary forever after that. The uh, But it's nice just to even like, we do a funny thing where we send out a reminder to the guy, right? Hey, just a heads up, your anniversary's coming up. Um, you know, it's just something funny, something cool, just like, you know, they giggle type of thing. Um, we've done it where we've done like, you know, a big package and partnered with limo companies and all kinds of cool things. Um, so if I'm if I have a lot of success mailing birthdays and half birthdays, well, I can get people's birthdays. Like it's not hard. I can do it on Facebook. So how about you go and you find the people that are like your customers on Facebook that are not your customers, and you present them with an offer for a birthday, you know, meal. And we have people that do this so successfully they do it for pennies, pennies. But cold birthday is a great, great program. The beauty of these that I really like is, you know, if you have a brick and mortar and you're mailing out birthdays and you got a good customer list, right? You know, so say you're getting out three to 500 of them. Awesome. You know, you can count on a certain percentage of them coming back. That's money in the bank. Well, the cold birthday thing too, you can do. So now it's like, you've got 500 of these going out. You got 500 cold birthdays to people around your business. And you know that, you know, your regular birthday gets, you know, a 25% return, your cold birthday gets an 18, like, okay, but at least if I mail in 500, I know what I'm going to get out of it. So those are things. And then the other one that's a steady eddy, and these are every month, you know, that you're getting these mail, this mail is going out. The other good one is the new movers, right? People are constantly moving in and out of your neighborhood and, and in your service zone, 
well, why not get the list? And you can buy this list too. Why not get a list of all the people that are moving, right? How do they do it? You know, oh, well, they change their address with the post office and then the post office is happy to sell your information. So, you know, you can get a list of the people that move into your neighborhood. How nice is that to be the first one, whatever business you have, okay? You know, you're the insurance guy, like, hey, you know, heard you're new to the neighborhood, want to be the first one to say, hey, right? Like that is like on top of it, right? You get them to your restaurant, get them to use your car detailing service, be the one, because what happens when people move is they sign up for new services, right? They got to go and they got to find the dry cleaner and their favorite little restaurant. And, you know, they need all these things that they're used to in their life. Well, why don't you show up and be really convenient with it? And I'm telling you, those core programs, everybody should be doing those in every single business at some level. So if you don't have a new mover, you're missing out. You don't have a, you know, if you have some way to celebrate birthdays, um, I would absolutely be doing the birthday, half birthday and cold birthday. Everybody should be mailing out a newsletter, producing it, giving it out in some way, shape or form. And then I think after somebody's a first time customer for you, then you want them to become right, their customer of a single transaction. But you know you want them to become a client, right? A repeat person in your business. Well, the way to start that off is like start the relationship really well. You know, it's like you know you want a first date. Well, like after that first date, you get the warm fuzzies. So what do you do? You like send flowers or something? Like that's like the right answer. Okay, that's how you get them and you keep them for at least longer than you would have. So same thing for your customers. You know, you should constantly be doing that stuff. You know, we have a pretty high check average. You know, I don't think it's that difficult for the, you know, the manager in our business to be able to just, you know, handwrite a thank you note, and put it in the mail, right? You know, you got 100 customers in a week, take you five minutes for each one. You're not talking about a lot of time in the day, but God, the impact that would have on your business. Or have a card that's already like pre-printed and you just got to kind of sign it and then boom, put it in the mail, send it out. So, you know, maybe it's got to refer a friend in there. You know, hey, I know you just got your car clean, but I'm sure you got some neighbors or a spouse or somebody. Well, hey, here's something that, you know, they can bring it in and, you know, we'll give them a free windshield treatment or something. There's there's lots and lots of ways to engage folks. And I just don't think people think through it enough. But the general planner is really, really good. And then when you look at the advanced planner, right, you got to get out and, in, and market your business. You got to get to some events. Um, any follow-up calls, right? New folks, you know, what are you doing? Like, you know, have you ever just picked up the phone and called some of your past customers? The best thing to do is a lost customer campaign, right? Always track when people have, you know, are not, you know, most people have a cadence to their business. Okay. In the restaurant business, I would expect that people would be in, in my business at least once a month. If I'm doing a good job. Well, if I have their information, they're in my loyalty program, they haven't been in in 30 days, they get a lost customer mailing, okay? If they don't come in then, then they get another one, right? It's like 60 days. If they don't come in again, they get another one, 90 days. It's a picture of like, you know, we're sending out search and rescue people to find them because we're so concerned that we have not heard from them. So lost customer, well, just reach out to customer. Lost customer, just pick up the phone, call up the person. What do you have to lose if they're a lost customer? and they're gone, it's not going to hurt you to call them up and find out why they're not doing business with you. And you might find out that they moved. <laughs> so you know, those are those are things that I, I just really recommend um, looking at business in a more simplistic way and doing some things that will help your, your business every day. You should be writing a blog. You should be getting stuff out, right? You got to be posting and going after your, your listings and your directories. And then, you know, find three new potential clients, customers, prospects, pockets of people that you can interact with go join a local group on facebook and you know you don't need to be the pushy sales guy just hey i'm jonathan Bobrano wash just you know happy to be here let me know if you guys you know need any tips on cleaning your car okay let me know if you guys you know i'm a, I'm a chef let me know if you need any tips on you know making food and then you share some food you know, you'd share some pictures of food. Next thing you know, they're like, oh my God, that looks good. Where do I get it? Oh, you come to my restaurant. <laughs> so that, but again, if you keep adding three groups every single month, next thing you know, at the end of the year, you know, you're fat city. So you got like a lot going on and it's all kind of works together automatically. So, so that's pretty much it guys. I 
I love this, love this call. Love to get your feedback. If you enjoyed the, the program, you have ideas, something I said made you just like, oh my God, he, I wish you told everybody this, send it to me. We're happy to, to get that out for everybody. And we just want this to be a really successful program for you. And we want to help you grow your business every single minute of every single day. So have at it. I, I look forward to hearing about all the great stuff you guys do in September. Signing off. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.